Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ghost 11 Vice Squad, brought to you by the Andromas Flag Company, our sponsor. After you watch today's video, please hit that subscribe button, like button, and the little reminder bell so you don't miss any of our future episodes. Also, check out our awesome online stores at fishingoutdoors.ca and .net for U.S. and international shoppers. So then the vice, we're going to tie this little uh, dark-colored stonefly. It's a pass rubber leg, basically. Um, works really well for... We need to get down deep with these winter months coming up. This fly uh, will be my point fly for most nymph rigs and running a much smaller nymph above it. So, we are going to take a size 8 hook. It's an X series um, Super Jig 60, size 8 Umqua hook. I like this hook for this pattern because it's got a nice big gap. Um, and it's a pretty solid build. I'm not going to bend out on you. This is a 4.6 millimeter tungsten slotted bead in the color copper. And this is six to seven wraps, it's like six and a half really, wraps of uh, lead free wire. It's a 0.035 uh, wire. So if you need that number, it'll be down in the description as well as the rest of the materials. We're going to start our thread. I'm going to use a GSP for this. It's a, uh, this is 100 denier. Um, Vivas, and what we're going to do is we're going to start the thread right here, and we're going to bring it up over top of this lead, and then we're going to pull our, oh sorry, bring that up, make one loop, and bring our tag end back here, we're also going to loop around, and it's just really going to help cinch that, you can bring your tag end back in through one more time, Clench it, and one more time if we can stretch it. Yes, we can. And then you're just gonna really bear down. That's why I like the GSP for this fly. It's really not necessary, but I, I find it makes things easier. And then you're just gonna run this thread back through every slot of that wire. And that's just really gonna cinch it down with those uh, wraps over top of it. You can do this technique without GSP. But about, um, I don't know, three, three out of every ten times, it's going to end up breaking just because it's a little bit more brittle, especially if you use lighter threads. Uh, if you are going to use a lighter thread, uh, I, I don't recommend anything lighter than six aught for really cinching this down. So we're going to bring our thread back here to about the bend, actually, more towards the bend than I normally do in most flies. And we're actually going to create a little bit of thread dam to flatten it out. That way, our that way our back legs or tail, whatever it is, aren't going straight down. We want them to go straight back. That being said, we are going to use um, we're going to use Life Flex for this in black. And we're going to take about I don't know an inch and a half to two inches. Probably not quite two inches. Doesn't really matter because you'll trim it later. Piece of flexi, uh, or sorry, not flexi, um, this is a life flex. And I'm going to give the bobbin a little twist to tighten up my thread. I'm going to tie in one side. Make sure, no, actually, sorry, get this about even. That was pretty uneven there. Tie in one side and make sure that it is going out. You're going to work your thread up. Get it like a little bit farther, almost to the lead. Bring it over, bend it over, and wrap right back on top of it. So now I see how you got these back legs, tail spread out. Now, with this little extra gap that we have before we get to the lead, makes a really great place to tie in your chenille. This is a fly fish food, small stone fly chenille in uh, black tobacco. I'm just gonna, oops, thread split on me because I got into the lead. Try it again. You can tie it in right there. And it's on a lot. Cut off this tag end. Usually you try not to get that, but it's whatever. Snip it out. And you wanna take up that extra space to your lead. Now you have a pretty flat body. Bring your thread up to not quite the middle, a little bit farther up in the middle. 
We're about there. And we're gonna tie in two more sets of legs. You can also tie in one leg like this. That'll give you six on each side plus the tail, which is more accurate. My fish can't count and these are nice and quick for my box. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna tie them in like that. They'll flay right out. And you get two legs on that side. See that? And we're gonna do it again, directly parallel to it. It's okay if these don't flare out as much as you want, um, because we're just gonna take this chenille and do something pretty cool with it. I'm just gonna start wrapping, keep it nice and even. Um, another thing you could do is you can give it a little more taper if you want to, like be more realistic. When you're fishing a patch over lake, I find that realisticness is not your main goal here. Your main goal is to get a lot of weight in a realistic enough pattern that will catch fish. So now we're up to these legs. I like to pull it straight out, give it a little bit of tension, and then wrap over it. Same thing with this one, just so that I can control where it ends up going. Now we're gonna give it one more wrap over top of these legs, and then do the same thing where we pull back and put it exactly where we want. Pull it exactly where we want. And then one more wrap for this space behind the bead. Now this is another part where the GSB comes really nice. I can really bear down on this and actually pull it into the slot of the bead. Pull the chenille into the slot of the bead when I wrap over top of it which is a huge benefit for cinching that bead down. Now we're just gonna snip this right out. It's in a bad place on this one. There's not really anything you can do to stop that, but just don't snip your leg. It's hard to make a patch rubber leg without rubber leg. And we're just gonna make a few more cinching wraps. Move these legs around how you want. And then we're gonna half hitch off. One, two, three, should be plenty. Cut our thread. Reposition your legs a little bit. Um, for the most part, they'll stay where you want them. And then take your scissors and trim them to where you want. Now this is a huge thing amongst fly fishermen. Everyone likes different lengths of legs. I'm gonna explain the benefits and the uh, problems with certain ways of doing it. So the shorter your legs are, the less drag you're gonna have. I like a relatively short leg. You have less drag when you're trying to get down to the bottom, but with that extra drag comes a little bit slower drift. So maybe you want the longer legs for a slower drift. Or you can also get more movement underneath the water, which sometimes people will argue with trigger bites. I don't know enough about fish reactions to tell you if that's true or not. But this is the general idea of the fly. This is your patch rubber leg on a jigged hook. Great for a point fly in many, many nymphing situations. So thank you for watching today's video. Now that you've watched it, please hit that like button, subscribe button, and the little reminder bell so you don't miss any of our future episodes. Also, check out that online store at fishingoutdoors.ca and .net for U.S. international shoppers. You'll see Andromeda's Fly Company's link, um, and then so many other links to other outdoor companies. This is a great, great little collection there, so check it out. And with that being said, I uh, hope to see you guys next week. Bye.